Hey, Goldie. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Greg. Long time. Mm -hmm. Oh, is this Goldie from way back, way back yes. when? Yes. Way hey. back when. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? You're in California these days, yeah? I am. I am. Well, good to hear your voice. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to see you. Yeah. Um, so uh, I've had periodic spasm issues with my back okay. for years 20 okay. 30 years okay. and um i have had two episodes in the last year that last like a week or more where i'm in active spasm and previous to this at least this one i've been on uh, opiates and it would take you know the pain would just mm -hmm. only they're less effective and I'd like to not use them as much. Sure. So, so what opiate do they have you on? Um, Norco. Norco. Okay. And then um, is, is there like um, an impingement? Is there like thinning disc, a herniated disc, like bone on bone? Like what's well, going on with the back? The latest, the latest diagnosis since June, because I moved to a new place and new doctor is scoliosis. Previous okay. to that, I've had arthritis diagnosis, disc diagnosis, Diagnosis, a multitude of diagnoses. Okay. So this time they're saying scoliosis. Um, I've been doing, I actually was getting better where I was on five milligrams twice a day or, and sometimes not taking it, but I have back pain other than the, the uh, spasm, but I must have injured it about a week ago because then it goes into spasm. And I um, ran out of meds, have to go back and see the doctor, but I've been using um, Tylenol or ibuprofen, hot and cold showers, marijuana, <laughs> anything mm -hmm. to keep sure. the pain away. So, um, and Cindy and I were talking and we came on the, uh, you know, I'd done some research on the frankincense and she ordered it for me, but I don't know if that's the best, how to take it, how often. Um, so I, I would say, you, you know, I'd like to come at this for a, a couple, couple, like a couple things to do. And so like when you say pain, we're talking sharp pain, radiating pain, stabbing pain. Is it dull and achy? Like what, what kind of pain are we talking about? No, it's like a, a stabbing, searing pain okay. that that rate just is. I mean, I can almost see it. Sometimes it's a line. Sometimes it's like a pulsating thing. Okay. So he, he, here, here's the thing. So there, there's like a couple of things that I'd like to address. So one is just like the limbic response to pain, right? So, um, you, you know, we use like some things just to reduce the, the like the pain threshold or like, I, guess, I don't know if, the, if it's proper to say reduce or improve or increase or, but basically like shift the, the pain threshold. And, and so most times we use something called galbanum, which is in the frankincense family. Um, it, it can be very helpful for um, taking the edge off of pain just because it changes how your brain processes it, especially in the thalamus. excuse me. And that can be good. But here, um, I, I would actually lean more towards having you take um, pretty healthy dosages of myrrh. And myrrh hits the, the, that pain threshold and that, that same mechanism. But the thing with myrrh is it also hits the opioid re receptors and it will make your pain meds like work a little bit better and it will reduce the rebound that happens like when they wear off or if you don't take them the next day. And, you know, that's a big goal for, for, for anybody that's on an, uh, any sort of painkiller like that. Like, you know, you want to you wanna make it work better so you don't have to keep increasing dosage and you want to reduce the rebound effect, but you also want to diminish the, the rebound itself. And so um, 
I mean, I, I usually start people off with like maybe six, eight drops, you know, one or two times a day. Um, if you don't want to do quite that much, you could probably do four drops, but um, you'll probably find enough relief with it that you'll bump up to six or eight drops pretty, pretty quickly. It's also a bit relaxing, so it can help relax the back. Um, you know, it's not something we'd use for it being an antispasmodic, but it does take the edge off. So the, 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 the issue also, you know, before we even get to the pain itself, the issue with sharp stabbing pain, like any sort of nerve pain, be it radiating, tingling, prickling, sharp stabbing, is within about two weeks of having it, it starts to cause um, bron bronchial spasms and uh, spasms in the trachea. And so it actually um, reduces... Um, your ability to, to take in a uh, big gulp of air and then to, to exhale it out. Like you don't like empty the lungs out like normal. And so um, um, there's a couple of things that you could use for that. Um, you know, if you wanted to use uh, some oils, just like good old fashioned, like hyssop or larch could be used just inhaling it uh, multiple times a day. And it, it just that will also start to reduce some of the pain because basically what starts to happen is you start to have bronchial spasms and it starts to become harder and harder for your, your body to elevate the rib cage to breathe. And it throws the diaphragm into a spasm. And when the diaphragm tightens up and goes into a spasm, like it is a direct response. You can, there's a direct correlation that if the diaphragm is tight, the spinal muscles that go between the vertebrae actually tighten up. Like if you want to loosen those muscles up, one of the best ways to do it is to relax the diaphragm. And so just that will start to take some of the pressure off of those spinal muscles. And so the hyssop would address the, the spasms and it would, um, even reduce some of the tension in the trachea will start to relax the, the diaphragm a bit. And in doing so, a lot of times, like if the pain is at like an eight or a nine, just doing the breathing component of it will drop it down to like maybe a four or a five. And so like, if you keep like stacking some of these pieces together, you might be able to get the pain down significantly. Um, um, marjoram is a very good antispasmodic um, topically for, for something like that. Um, but I, I would use something directly on the spine that there's, there's a blend that we have pain, pain relief, like neuropathic that's made specifically for, for nerve pain. Like, you know, cause there's different kinds of pains. And so they have different mechanisms of like why they're happening. And like when you have sharp stabbing pain, it's usually an impingement, an entrapment, something's compromised in the, in the spine, in the, you know, up in the neck or, or in the head, you know, for the cranial nerves. And so we want to we wanna diminish that pain while taking some of the tension and spasm out of the, the spine itself. And so Oils that work really good for that are usually things that are mint based, like peppermint, forest mint, corn mint, you know, spearmint will work, scotch mint will work, but like peppermint and corn mint are your kind of go-to ones there. The forest mint doesn't quite have the menthol. We're, we're looking for menthol, you know, menthol will, will help to loosen the spine and it diminishes the the sensory input going to the, to the brain. And eventually we'd probably want to treat a little bit of brain fatigue because when there's been longstanding issues of um, uh, nerve pain, it, it, I mean, it's just a direct cor corresponding effect that you, uh, eventually it causes some brain fatigue. And, and so I'd say, let's just do this first and get you feeling a little bit better and then treat the brain fatigue, which would then deepen the level that, that uh, this treatment is going. But let's not overwhelm you with a whole bunch of things. Um, you, you know, the, the, the hyssop should work. You know, there's a blend bronchioles. 
Sometimes in, in more severe cases, I, there is an herb called labilia that I have people use sometimes. And just like one capsule, maybe twice a day, it relaxes the fascia and it relaxes the diaphragm. And so it can, can kind of help augment this. But um, I would do the myrrh for the, the limbic response and, and the, you know, the opioid receptors in the brain. Um, I would do like the hyssop for inhalations. And, and, and honestly, if you, if you already got the frankincense, like you could even use frankincense, like you would use the hyssop, um, like just long, slow, deep breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth. Um, that could be quite helpful. And then some sort of pain oil that you put directly on the spots. And so bet between that, that should start reducing it substantially. And it makes it easier to treat after you've done that for a little bit. Okay, so the one, uh, so you're saying myrrh, myrrh. Hyssop, yeah. frankincense, and then well, if, if you have if you have the frankincense, mm -hmm. like maybe let's even try it instead of the hyssop, and then if it just doesn't work, then we'll get you the like hyssop or something else. But like let's say, start inhaling the, the frankincense, long, slow, deep breaths. And then I'm going to run you through a little breathing exercise here right now that you can even do even if you don't have the essential oils for the bronchial spasms. Um, but so myrrh internally, and we'll we'll um, edit this clip and um, send you this clip so that you have it and you can watch the little segment over that's specific to you. And so let's make sure that we have her. Be sure that we have your email address and we'll, okay. we'll send you the link for, for this little excerpt and we'll have somebody uh, edit it out and get it to you. And then um, the pain relief neuropathic or at least like peppermint or corn mint or something. Corn mint has the highest level of menthol out of all the plants. And so it's, it's this funky kind of mint that grows up in Nepal. And it's, it's what they use to make menthol, like menthol crystals. And, you know, when you have menthol and different things, it's what they kind of break up and, and use the menthol out of it for, for natural source. And so um, that, that should be good. But so here's, here's the, the little breathing exercise that I'd like you to do. And just here's the way to test it is like, you take a long, slow, deep breath in through your nose where you like you inhale. And then as you exhale, you want to be able to exhale even slower than your inhalation and keep it even. But when you have bronchial spasms, this is what happens. You go, OK, inhale really slow and then you go, OK, now over the next 20 seconds, exhale and you go. Right. Or you go, you know, because the bronchioles are in spasm, so you can't control the exhalation. And so it's not whether or not you have bronchial spasms because you've had sharp stabbing pain. It's how bad are they? Because within 14 days, you're going to have bronchial spasms. It's just to what degree. And then that exaggerates the pain, right? That exaggerates the pain syndrome. And so this is how you go through and treat this. You inhale very slowly, and then you purse your lips together really super tight and just leave a little tiny hole for the air to come out, but so that you have to force it out, like how you like blow up a balloon. So you inhale, and then and then long, slow, deep breath again, and then Keep making it like hard to push it out between the, the lips. So let's go ahead and just, let, you know, everybody who could do it together or at least Goldie, let's have you do it. Like inhale and then tighten the lips up. So there's just a little tiny hole and then really force it out.
And then inhale again, like slow. Hold your breath for a second, tighten the lips, and then again, force it out. Keep doing it. Do it like maybe one or two more times. Okay. Okay. And then just sit there for a second and just be still for a second. And did that change the pain in your body a little bit? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. You, usually even just opening up the lungs will take the edge off the, the sharp pain. Like it'll still, like the pain will still be there, but it like it takes it down a notch or two. So that use it when you're in the spasm, not necessarily. I, I would do it on a regular basis. So you just unwind it because the, the thing, the thing with that too, is when, when the, the, it's like this chain reaction that happens. And so when, when the, the bronchioles are in spasm, it actually, is, um, your uh, adrenals to overactivate. Like it, it stimulates the fight flight response in the autonomic nervous system and your adrenals to overactivate, which then increases body tension and, and um, your reaction to pain. And so all these things together are, are to like reverse the thing that's been happening with the chronic pain. But um, we really need to unwind the, the bronchioles a bit. And so I wouldn't even wait till you're in pain. I would just, like every day, you know, like four or five breaths where you where you do the pursed lip breathing and you can do some inhalations with the frankincense in, in between. If you want to do more than four or five of the pursed lip breathing, you can, but augment it with the frankincense, like just long, slow, deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth, and just keep doing that for, for a little bit. And the more that you are able to unwind the bronchioles and the trachea, the more that you're going to decrease the tension in the, the multifidi, the little the spinal muscles along the spine, and it starts taking pressure off those spinal nerves. So we're going to try to come at it from a couple of different ways, but usually consistently this pretty much will... You know, it's not going to fix everything, but it's definitely going to take the edge off a whole bunch. And then it makes whatever issue is going on there much easier to treat. But right now we got to get you out of like that pain cycle. Okay. Now you said a pain oil directly on the skin. Which one is that? Is it's that pain relief neuropathic? Pain relief neuropathic. That's the name of it? Pain yeah. relief neuropathic, which just is a fancy way of saying nerve pain. Okay. So I have myrrh mm -hmm. for internally, frankincense inhale, right. the pain relief medicine for the on the skin directly. Right. And the corn mint is how no, like the, the pain relief neuropathic is all you need to do. Like if you okay, don't do the pepper, no, it's pepper. got corn mint in it. So you're good. Okay. All right. And then oh. give, us an, give us an update in about a week or two uh, after treating it. Okay, so um, does it interact with the um, opioids? And it will actually make them work a little bit better. Like it won't make you like like all like loopy or anything, but it just it makes the pain relief part work a little bit better, and it diminishes the rebound that happens when the painkiller wears off. So I would say that the interaction is that it makes it work better. Like it won't offset it. It won't over overdo anything. It actually makes things work a little bit better. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You're so welcome. Hey, good, good hearing from you. It's yeah. been, been a long time.
Yeah, it's been uh, what probably 15, 15 almost 15 20 years. years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you've come a long way. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Good to hear from you. Take care.